So now in this video, we're coming back to this switch. This circuitry up here was from last video. I may modify it for a future video, so I'm not taking it off the board yet. I was using lower voltage though, and so one of the resistors, this one in particular, was a 100 ohm resistor, now it's a 220 ohm resistor, and uh, it really won't come into play in this video though. But uh, since I raised the voltage, I made sure I raised the minimum resistor. So in any case, if you didn't see that video or whatever, then yeah, this probably doesn't make any sense to you. But in any case, we have power supply set to 5 volts. This is a magnetic switch that I have, and I did a video on this a long time ago. I did it right after work, and I probably had one chance to do it, and it worked out. And that, I think, is my second most popular video, something like that, which is uh, really cool. So, in any case, we have a comm there, normally closed and normally open. And the way to switch this is the proximity of the magnet here. So apparently this is the normal position as we will look at later. So uh, that's normally open and that's normally closed. Or no, that one's normally closed. So it looks a little better in person than on camera. Let's see if we can get that writing right there. So, so yeah, that's NC and then NO over there. And so normally closed means that in the normal position that's on and that one's off and then we in this case move the magnet now it's not the normal position I don't know what exactly we call it that would mean that that one is now closed and then that one is open it uh, switches back and forth and so we will look at that with a more practical circuit so the power supply is off right now the output is and we're going to put the yellow one to this LED here. So you can see the long lead LED goes to the protective resistor, 220 ohms to protect from 5 volts. And that will limit the current. And uh, there we go. And so one row down is the cathode. We're going to put the yellow jumper there. And these just screw down really easy. There's like a little ridge right there. So there, I think there's or there are like forked connectors. The forks probably fit right in there right nicely and then it closes down around them. It also closes nicely around the uh, jumper there. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Short lead the cathode of the LED. We're going to put that jumper right there. Long lead the anode comes to the resistor. So each one of these, the circuit will start there through the resistor, the LED, come here and then go to here to ground. That's for both of them. That's why the cathode goes there. But again, one of them will connect at a time right there and we'll put this here and let's put the magnet right next to it so you can see the two arrows are pointing to each other so I'm pretty sure this is the normal position because this one says normally closed and now we will turn the power on so with this portable power supply you hit the uh, power button and then the power's on so the normally closed one is on right now if I move this away now the normally open one is on so now this one's closed and that one is open it's open because that's off it's closed because that's on closed is a little easier to understand we have a direct connection it's closed right now well this one's open there's a gap between where uh, this terminal comes and that terminal comes there's a gap so no current can flow whereas we have a direct connection there and we can put this back and go there so we can control two different circuits independently but have them switch at the same time and so we have probably a single pole here and right now it's connected there and then when we open it connects over there so there's probably two points that one read is going and uh, bouncing back and forth but you never know with switches there's a number of different options and then some switches that are similar to uh, this I have relays and stuff and I don't think I have any but some switches there some period of time while it is switching they are actually both connected and then other switches one disconnects right before the other one connects and so I don't know for sure how uh, this one is but uh, there's a number of different switch options for this particular circuit, it doesn't matter. You know, they one can turn on 
while the other one's on for a fraction of a second, who, who really cares? You know, it's switching uh, pretty quick. But if you have circuitry where both of them can't be powered at the same time, you definitely need to make sure your switch is break before make. And uh, that means it will break the connection to one before making the connection to the other. And you can have make before break where there's a short period of time they're both on before the other one kicks on. So you need that when you can't have them both off for whatever reason. So in any case, there's a lot to switches. It's really not complicated. It may seem overwhelming at first, but it's actually pretty cool. You have a whole bunch of options. You can see here we have 20 milliamps of current. So some of the current is being used by that circuit there because it's on the board. It's This LED is just off. If I turn it on, it will be using more current. As you can see there, we got more current being used. I set a maximum of 60 milliamps and uh, we're nowhere near there. So we go down, now it's about 20 milliamps of current and uh, so if I yank this LED, you can see it's about 5 milliamps of current that that one is using. So a milliamp is one thousandths of an amp. So the thousandths is here, hundredths there, and tenths is there. So if you're looking at that current that's this circuit plus that circuit. We have 5 volts and 220 ohms. So that is using up about 15 milliamps of uh, current right now. And the other one's off, so it's not using any. So in any case, that's just a little extra dimension. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.